or we could also call it creative prayer. And we're going to continue that tonight because basically I started from the chaotic condition uh, that resulted. It became chaotic. God originally created the heavens and the earth to be inhabited. And uh, the earth was, or some would say in the Hebrew, it became. Uh, and therefore, it needed recreation, remade, restoring. And uh, uh, in fact, it's, and so I spoke on Genesis 1, uh, starting on the seven days. Eventually, we'll get through all seven days. But it basically started out, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and the light he called day, the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, I got a little bit of the second day, which is permanent, but here's what I shared, that the scripture says in the book of Isaiah 46, verse 10, you don't have to follow that, but he says that, depending on which version, but he says that God declares the end from the beginning. <clears throat> That's a really important way of God. That when you want to know how God works and how he's going to work in your life, in the work of a nation, the work of a person, the ways of God, not just the acts of God, but the ways of God, you will find it in the book of Genesis. In fact, this is what we are learning and seeing, that if you want to know about man's our, our growth order, as in the new creation, you can go to the book of Genesis, and in our lives, chapter 1, you will find an outline how God brings salvation and it progresses in our life until we become a mature man and we have rest. Uh, also, if you want to know when there's chaos and how to come out of chaos into God's order, then you can find it in Genesis chapter 1 because he shows the end from the beginning, how to bring about a new creation, how in prayer to create his order. And we can do that in the kingly ministry. And, uh, and so let me give you two or three verses. And then uh, I'm just going to share very briefly my part tonight. And Joshua is going to discuss more on the second and third day. But in the book of, of Hebrews, you say, well, how do you do this? In January, the Lord uh, began to lead me to memorize Genesis 1 and to study those seven days of creation. Now, that was in January. It's almost been, what, five to six months, and I'm just barely getting into it, but it's been so awesome and so phenomenal what God has been showing me. So let me read something to you. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, uh, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or conviction of things not seen. For by it, faith, the men of old gained approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared, one version says, framed by the word of God. So that what is, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are, are visible. Now, what he is saying in this incredible scripture is that we understand how that the worlds were framed. We understand. And that is, uh, that comes from a Greek word that means to exercise the mind. You see, in the spirit, you may already know, but our understanding, the natural mind, lacks. And so we need divine revelation by the spirit, but we need sometimes understanding. So uh, he says, we understand. Well, how do you understand? He says, by how the, the world was framed. Uh, and the word world there is more than just physical. It can be physical, the universe, the moon, the sun, the stars. But it is also in the realm of non-physical. Because in reality, when it says world, it simply means in, in the physical, the physical universe. But in the non-physical, it can mean age, period of time, etc. You'll find that in Strong's Concordance or Strong's uh, uh, word studies. And so when he says the world, it's more than just physical, it includes that, but it's also the dy dimensions and dynamics of an age, of an era, or a period of time. 
Now, it says they were framed, and the word frame means restored, repaired. So whatever era, whatever physical, whatever non-physical realm of your life is in chaos or broken, it can be repaired and can be restored. Do you agree with that? That's what he says by faith. We understand. Now, how do we understand? I don't understand the scientific terms. I couldn't begin at all to explain. We understand by the word of God. They were framed and made by the word of God. Not just scriptures, the scriptures are written word, but the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. They create, they restore, they have power, they heal, they bring salvation, they have deliverance. So it's very powerful what the word does. That's the reason in the creation, Genesis 1, every time God created something, it says, and God said. Did he not? And God said. And there is a creative power within us by the Holy Spirit that we can say and we can speak. Now, let me show you a little further uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4. Chapter 4. Actually, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, We were created, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Where do you think he gets that from? The same way that God created the original order in Genesis 1 is the same way that we have a new creation within us whenever there was turmoil and chaos and the Spirit of God moved upon us and the first thing God did was there let there be light. John 1 says, and that life is the light of men. Now, 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, let me read this to you, and I'm going to conclude with this because there's so much <clears throat> that we want to look at. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 6. And uh, chapter 4, verse 6. <clears throat> I realize I'm just going to get so far, but I feel like that uh, Josh has so much here. It says, Concerning the Lord, who also God, one verse says, God, who made, I'm sorry, uh, I'm in chapter 3. Uh, chapter 4, verse 6. For God, who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? <clears throat> God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Isn't that what he did in Genesis 1? So when there's chaos, that's the way that he brings order out of chaos. We learn in creative prayer to speak into that situation. Now, what we're going to do, because you can get my tape uh, from last on our website from last Sunday, and I go through this much more in detail. In fact, in the future, there's even more that I'll show you. But when I began first discovering this, I thought, wow, we can do this. Christ in us, is he not? And so in, you'll find it in the Gospel of John, in the prayers that our Lord taught. And so I began to realize in some chaotic condition, I began to try and, and to walk in this by the Holy Spirit. And I remember praying that it was in the Spirit that I began to pray actually for two different people and when I would pray it's as though I was right there I could see them in my spirit in my mind and here's how I prayed see I used to I used to pray in a way and it didn't always work well you don't use the same prayer for every situation Paul tells us that that there's prayer there's supplications and intercession we know what those are and prayers well, we've identified many different kinds, ways, how to pray. That's the reason we're to pray in the Spirit and in a language because the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses when we do not know how to pray. For we do not know how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep to be uttered. And I didn't know how to pray. I'd prayed a lot of different ways. I'd rebuke Satan. I would bind. I would bring, and nothing seemed to work. And the Lord began to show me that there's a way to bring order out of chaos, and I began to speak into it. Now, I could... You know, if I tried this same prayer in something else, that may not be how to pray. I have to, by the Spirit, know how to pray. 
And so here is how it taught me how to pray. I'd been studying Genesis 1, and I thought, wow, this, there was a relationship just in chaos, was out of order. And the Holy Spirit brought them to my mind. It's just almost I was there. And I remember saying, let there be light. That's all I said. Let there be light. And I kind of waited a moment in my prayer. And it's like in my spirit. I could see this light and it got brighter and brighter until I saw, hey, it's good. That's what the Lord says. Let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. And then I realized, hey, you know, there's been a lot of confusion and ideas and thoughts and opinions. And, and some of those are wrong. And I said, God, divide the light from the darkness. And guess what? It happened. I knew by the Spirit. And then the light he called day and the darkness he called night. Now, I did that with the other person. And I'm telling you, within 24 hours, both of those persons called me within five minutes of each other. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen to you every time just like that, but I be, that's how I started walking in this, and then I'm continuing to walk. There's many, many other things I'm learning. I've tried to pray in some instances in this, and it didn't work that way because that wasn't how I was to pray. I was to go to the courtroom, which we have taught about. So how to pray is important, but we want to show you how to pray in this creative prayer that's within us that we can say, we can make, we can, we can create only by the word of God out of chaos bring order. The first day was light. There must be light. Then after that, he created a firmament. So I'm going to ask Joshua to come. Does this give you some understanding? What you may like, please go to last Sunday's tape bring an order out of chaos, and I go into this much more detail. I, I could have gone a little bit further tonight, but I think many of you had questions, and I think we all understand that we can pray and that when there's chaos and we and God leads us to pray like this, there is within us greater things will you do than these because I go the Father, Jesus said, but we must pray according to his glory. And uh, we can command light to shine out of darkness. But that's only step one. God wants to bring it to a mature man. Not only will that work in us, others is going to start working in us. Amen? So, Joshua. Thank you, Don. <clears throat> So this message after Don preached, well, before has always been kind of exploding with inside of all four of us, but really me. And so I've really been kind of chewing on this since he spoke on it last Sunday quite a bit. And I felt like God was really speaking. So I want to go over day two with you guys, and I'm going to correlate it to a creative prayer. But I'm also going to hopefully give some understanding on how this, how, how God recreates you from that just slosh bucket of darkness, the moving waters that everything is black and disgusting that is in the beginning and then matures you into the mature man, which is going to be pretty cool. And so I'm hopefully God will speak to me and we can get this rolling here. So I want to start off with day two here. And so there's light, there's day and night at the end of day one. And then God says, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water and let it divide the water from the water. So I'm going to draw up here. I'm going to write fir firmament. I'm just going to write firm. And this is the water above. Oh. And this is the water below. Okay. So as Don touched on last week in his creative prayer, the purpose is of light is to do what? Is to illuminate. That is the purpose of light at day one, is to bring separation between light and darkness, that which is good from that which is not, not good, that which is of life of Christ, that which is not of life of Christ. And a lot of us, once we figure out you know, what is good or bad, we want to jump into it and untangle the darkness and get everything worked out. Well, that's not how God works. He doesn't jump in in day two and untangle the darkness. What does he do? He calls forth a firmament in the midst of this water that's down here at the end of day one. There's day and night, but he brings this midst of this firmament between here and here. 
Now this water is still that soul realm with inside of yourself that is still in, in chaos, still no peace, still no really understanding with inside of yourself. But I wish to, def- to define more so this firmament and hopefully brings us some understanding. So as Don spoke uh, last week, he talked about the firmament, the, the firmament. Also, the Hebrew word can also mean the arranger. And one of the base words of this word means to set in place or to place. And so what we see here is that this, God brings this to bring order on this down here. I'm going to bring understanding. But there's a cause and effect. This affects this. The firmament affects the waters below. I'm not going to get up here. I'm going to stick right here. The firmament right here affects this. That's what I want you to keep in mind. It's going to arrange. It's going to set in place. Turn with me, if you can, to Philippians 2, 5. 2, 5. This is Paul. Well, actually, let's start in verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition, conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others verse 5 here let this mind be in you which also is in Christ Jesus so this word for mind here is kind of an exercise in your mind from a point of perspective a point of view and so he's saying this mind this way of thinking this way of belief this way of living that Christ lived in on earth He prays that this mind be in you. Now, my hypothesis, my thesis, is that this mind, this way of perceiving, this way of of believing, this way of living, is the firmament that God's going to set in here. Now, let us continue. Verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, Now, so he's saying this mind, this way of perceiving is very close to resemble. It's the same form in which the Father in heaven is working from. Now, turn with me back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 7, or... Verse 7, thus God made the firmament and God divided the water under the firmament from the water above. So God called the firmament heaven and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and morning the second day. Now, in chapter 1, verse 1, God says God made the heavens and the earth. So that's plural right here. He calls the firmament heaven. Well, what does this tell us? That there are many realms beyond this heaven, this firmament that God is that God is explaining. But it's kind of like he's saying it's it's closely resembles the the heavens up there, the heaven of heavenlies or whatever they're called. It's it's that same kind of order. He gives it the same name heaven it's almost like it's his baby brother or something like that well what do we just read in philippians here we read that this mind here we are this mind being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god so what is he saying this right here this firmament is a pattern, is something closely resembling the heavens of heavens that are way up here somewhere. And I'm not going to get into those right now, as Don has mentioned them a little bit. But my point is, is that this is a pattern of this way up here. 
This shows this. And what I mean, the realities of the firmament show the realities of heaven. Now, what is in the firmament? And we've got to go a couple days in advance to just bring understanding to this. What is in the firmament? Uh, uh, verse 14 in chapter 1, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven for illumination to divide day from night. Let them be for signs, season, days, years, illumination. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night. So in this firmament of heaven, you have the sun, you have the moon, the, the greater light and the lesser light. Then you also have um, the stars. And so you have these other lights, okay? So right in this, in this type of this heaven, this firmament right here that God makes, the baby heaven, quote unquote, if I had a better word for it. But there you have the sun, the moon, and the stars in there. Now, what does the sun show? It shows the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does the moon show? The moon shows the reflection of the sun. Who is the reflection of the sun? The church. Who are the stars? Well, they can be two things, probably. Ministering spirits, angels. Or they can be leaders within the church who are particular, different, kind of like the angels in Revelation. On some level like that. Okay? So in this firmament... This place, this mind, this way of perceiving, this point of view, you have a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have a revelation of the church. You also have a revelation of leaders, of angels who are the stars. I'm showing this all through type, okay? Okay, so we have that. Now, what is also interesting verse 20 and it says then God said let the waters bring forth living creatures having life and let the birds fly above the earth earth across the face of heaven's firmament so what does that mean the birds fly right here they fly in the face of of heaven's firmament. They're above the earth, but they're below. They're flying in the face of, of this firmament that God created. Now, what does that mean, Joshua? Why are you telling me that? Well, let's turn to Philippians chapter 3. So God, as we're turning there, God is showing us something here. He's showing us an order, a way of living, a way of thinking, a way of perceiving. As Don said, you are a new creature in Christ, right? So therefore, in this new creature, this new creature has different facilities. We met with this fellow this week. He said, did God not give us a mind to use? And I would say, yes, God gave you a mind to use, but he also is bringing this new creature forth who does not walk according to the mind, the natural mind, the natural emotions. He walks in a different area, a different realm. And so God's purpose is to bring us into this realm, right? To eventually bring heaven down to, your, to earth. And so right here, God wants us to be in this perspective. This perspective of, of, of God, the heavens, all these things that are beyond the natural realm, that are beyond anything, God wants us to live from this perspective. And so he brings this understanding. What does Paul say? The natural man cannot understand the things of God. That which is spiritual must be discerned spiritually. So if you're going to understand the new creature, you have to switch your point of view. You have to switch the way you understand. You have to gain this new understanding the same mind that was in Christ it must be formed in you if you're going to understand the new creature because the new creature does not operate on natural realm it it does not operate according to those natural laws it is above these things are we in Philippians chapter 3 hope we are verse 12 not that I have already attained or am already perfected, 
but I press on, get this, he's talking about completion. He's talking about us coming to completion, okay? But I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So your purpose that Christ Jesus laid hold of you for, he wants you to take hold of it. How are you to grasp things? It's not according to your natural mind. It's from his perspective that you're going to be able to grasp, grasp things, okay? So get this. Brethren, I do not count myself to, be, to have apprehended but one thing. I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, God is showing what? Go upward. Go upward. Pay attention to up here. Do not pay attention to down here. Unfortunately, we're all stuck our heads in the sand and we're not looking upward. Let's continue on. Listen to this. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even to you. So what is he saying? To come to this completion, to come to this perfection, to lay hold of everything that God wants you to lay hold of for your life. He's saying that you must have this mind and walk according to this, to this mind, this way of thinking. This perspective right here. And he says, if in anything you think otherwise, that means if you have differing thoughts from here, the differing thoughts that don't come from this perspective, if you're pressing toward this, if you're wanting to desire seeing from God's perspective, understanding from that perspective, hey, he's going to give you that perspective. He says, God will, will reveal show even this to you everything is going to work out he says if you're if you're searching for my perspective if you're searching for my wisdom if you're searching for my understanding my wisdom my my thinking my way of of believing of walking verse 16 nevertheless to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. So he's just reiterating. Guys, you have to start pushing into this other realm of the firmament because it is the reality that I've placed inside of you. He's saying, I, put, I want you to start perceiving from my perspective when you approach a situation at work, when you approach a situation with your family, when you approach a situation in any place, I want you to start the mind that is in Christ. I want that mind to be shown in you, to be brought forth in you so you can come to completion, right? Because we don't want the shadows of the heavenly things. We want the true heavenly things. Brethren, join me in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. And he's not just saying that he's not saying that to be uh, to be rude, to be prideful. He's just saying, hey, we all have to follow the same path. We all have to walk from this perspective in our mind. If we think that we can do it another way, then you're going to miss it. And you're always going to end up bumping your head and stumping your toe. Now I want to skip a couple of verses to verse 19, and he's talking about people, and he says, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Now get this, for our citizenship is in heaven from which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that is that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is even able to subdue all things. So let's go back to Genesis. Why does God want to give us this perspective? Well, to reach completion, to understand from his point of view. But what happens in day in the at the end of day three? You have fruit appearing, you have leaves appearing, you have trees appearing, uh, you have animals then appearing the next day. Those that fly from those that don't fly, those who creep from those that don't creep. All these things are starting to come forth in us as believers. Now we must understand that this is a recreation. He's not just 
placing, he's not making these things up in heaven and putting them down on earth. What does he say here? He says in verse um, verse 11, chapter 1 of Genesis, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the herb of grass, bearing seed according to its likeness. The same thing. He's, he's going to call forth from the earth whatever it is. Seed, trees, animals, whatever, from the sky, from the water. He's going to call it forth. So what does that mean? That in day two, in this black mass that is at the end of day two, all those things are already there, folks. Everything's already there. It's dark. It's not, it's not known. It's not understood. But before God starts bringing things up inside of you that He has put in there from many years ago, generational things or what have you, God wants you to have this perspective. Because what happens if you get a bad tree grown up in you, a bad fig tree, uh, you start dealing with demonic attacks and you don't have God's perspective. If you're not understanding from the firm in its point of view, you're going to be hit. You're going to be knocked down. You're going to become... An addict like me, you're going to become problematic because you're not understanding from God's point of view. Guys, we have to understand that when God created us, He uniquely made us. Every person in here, He's put in something, probably multiple things, that are supposed to come forth. But what has also happened in these generations is that the devil has also come and plant too. Other things have happened to us. There's outside forces and chaos. But God wants to, when these things start coming forth from down here, He wants us to understand from the firmament. The mind that is in Christ, let it be in you. And the mind of Christ is according to what? It is according to God the Father who is in heaven. Now, John chapter 1, it says this. I forgot which verse specifically. It's 18. It says, No one has seen God except the only one who is from the Father. Jesus Christ, I'm paraphrasing. No one has seen God at any time except the only begotten God from the Father. He has explained Him. What does that mean? That He's also reiterating that the only way you're going to understand these heavens that are way up here, or wherever they are, these dimensions, is that you're going to have to understand them through what? The revelation of the Son. Who is the Son? Jesus Christ. You're only going to be able to understand how it applies to you when you understand angels, when you start to understand the ministry of the church, when you start to understand these things, that is when you are going to be able to have applicably, experientially live out what God has purposed us to do. I also want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, which Don read earlier, and then I'm going to wrap it up here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. How are we transformed? When we look into Jesus' face. So what does it mean to look in Jesus' face? Well, what shows the glory of God? Jesus' face. So when you look at Jesus' face, you're seeing what is inside of Christ, are you not? Well, if you're seeing from this perspective of the firmament, you're seeing from the perspective of God the Father who is sitting on the throne. Now, when we see from that perspective and we see all this chaos, we're not concerned because we know that God's going to set forth order in it. This is the point of creative prayer. God, or Paul says, I dare not share anything but is done, that has been worked in and through me. And so if you're not able to understand from God's perspective on things in life, how are you going to pray for people who don't ever see God's perspective for that to be formed out there 
in them. If you don't know what day and night is inside of you, how are you going to be able to pray for somebody and minister to them and say, hey, let the light come forth. Let it be separated from the darkness. And so God teaches us that not only we have to receive the light, we also have to let His mind, this firmament, the face of Jesus, what He's showing right here, we have to look at it. We have to search out the different revelations of the Son. He's the door. He's the way. He's the tree of life. He's all these different revelations. A revelation according to the order of Melchizedek. He's prophet, king, priest. All these different revelations He's wanting to show us and give us. Because it then will give us perspective on things of earth because we have perspective of things beyond How did God begin forming each and one of us? He started from the inside out. Same thing is true. God is bringing these, these heavenly things that are inside of us, these firmaments, this way of thinking, this mind of thinking and believing. He's bringing it forth to bring change on the earth. But not just the chaos, but to bring order on this earth. Now you may ask, How do you perceive or how do you know when you're perceiving from this realm, this firmament, and not something else? Well, if you were to go outside outside and look up at the sky, you'd see a sky, right? What would you see? You'd see probably birds. You'd see some clouds. You'd see the sun if it was not covered up. If at nighttime, you'd see the moon and the stars. But if you remove all the clouds, all the birds... It's still the same out there every single day. The sun does not shine differently in any day. Yes, it may have burst on the, on the outside, you know, different solar burst and stuff like that. But the perspective of the sun's light night shining has to do from where we are. When we're not facing it, when the world is turning, right, and we're on the dark side of the planet, we can't see the sun. That means where I have the wrong perspective. Because the light is always shining in darkness. What does God say? Darkness and light are the same to me. What does that mean? Because He's from this perspective. He's looking from this perspective. He's looking from the perspective of the sun. It's like He's standing out in space and looking down on the earth. And everything out in space is basically remaining the same. What is changing is the birds, the demons are flying up and trying to block your vision. What does that Scripture say? Cast down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Satan tries to what? Block your from receiving God's knowledge. How do you receive God's knowledge? By looking in the face of God. What blocks you from looking in the face of God from looking at that beautiful sun is that cloud. Is that cloud of depression that Satan brings or that, that dang vulture who's ugly and blocking the sun or whatever. Whatever's blocking you. He's trying to block you to keep you from looking at the sun. Or the moon in the nighttime. Satan is trying to block us. But God says, if you're sitting in my perspective, darkness and light are the same to me. So how do we know that we're seeing from this perspective? Do we have the fruit of the Spirit? Do we have a revelation of the Son, Jesus Christ? Do we have a revelation of the body? Do we see His work with the ministering spirits? This is how we know when we're not looking from an earthly perspective. When you sit down with your loved ones and you're talking about the things of God, when you're seeing from a different perspective, you have life and peace. There's that light shining. And you're not seeing from this confusion down here. You're seeing from up here. Hey, this is a problem, but... This is how God is going to work it out. This is how the sun is going to shine in this particular way. This is how the church is supposed to help you. This is how the angels are supposed to help you. This is how this one particular star is supposed to shine the brightest. That north star. You know, even if the moon's covered up, if you can see that north star, you can find your direction. What does Paul say? Follow us. Follow us. It's because he recognizes that there are stars out there. Who are the stars that God's given you? Do you have understanding of these? Do you have a revelation of the body? Do you have a revelation of the Son for your chaotic life right now? 
There are different ways where you're in chaos. Things are going to hell on this earth. Literally and figuratively inside of us, there are things that are being brought up in me that I never thought. For example, in Africa, one night I swear I saw the boogeyman fly across the window of my room. I felt like an eight-year-old kid. God said, I am bringing up what has been inside of you, that fear. See, God is bringing up this, but if I have the perspective up here, I can say, hey, whoa, whoa. God just wanted me to uproot that so it doesn't continue to grow. What did God say to Adam and Eve? I have given you dominion over the earth. Well, if you have His perspective, you're going to be able to rule and reign on the earth according to how God wants. But if you're sitting in a cornfield and that corn is up, are you going to be seeing anything coming at you? No, you're only going to be able to see the corn. Because it's going to block your view. So God calls you to this heavenly perspective. 